In fact, our God is so gracious in this and our God is so kind. He took a prophet's life and he said, hey, Hosea, you don't mind if I use your life as an example for hundreds of millions of people, do you? Hosea said, no, that sounds neat. What do you have in mind? I want you to marry a woman who's gonna be unfaithful to you repeatedly and I want you to continually love her and bring her back. You know, on second thought, God, why don't you just give me what Isaiah had, you know? Super cool prophecies about the Messiah and everybody loves him. He's got more chapters than me. You want me to marry a woman who's going to constantly be unfaithful to me? Yes, I want my people to see what their behavior is like towards me. And then I want them to understand that I will love them anyway. So he marries this beautiful woman with a beautiful name, Gomer. That's real. That's her name. And so he does. He marries her and they have children and they are not his children. In fact, he names one of the children not mine. It's a much more eloquent word, but the word means not mine. Finally, she decides that she's got this husband who loves her and forgives her and is constantly seeking after her. And she says, I've had enough with you and leaves him for one of the men that she's been unfaithful with. And then she bounces around from man to man during that time and ends up on a slavery block to be sold. On these blocks, she were stripped naked in a completely humiliating place so the buyer could see what they're getting. And as she stands on that block in the crowd, the scripture tells us, God tells Hosea, I want you to go get her. And with all the other voices bidding, she hears the voice of her husband who pays the highest price to be able to get her. He takes his cloak off, it says, and he puts it around her. You know, there's another person who came and found us in a place of slavery and bonded. Came from his high place down to where we were, but instead of reaching in his pocket to pull out money to bid, he took his life and he put it on a cross for you. He loved you all the way to that cross and then into the grave and then on that glorious day that he rose from the dead. And what's the scriptures say he did? He places his robe of righteousness upon them. Hosea, do you realize what your life was? His righteousness. You didn't seek it. You didn't earn it. You're not worthy of it. But he comes and he gives it to us and he offers it anyway. I'm telling you here today, if you want to see life in a completely brand new way, if you want to be transformed beyond just a prayer to ask God into your heart, if you want the power of God's Holy Spirit to change your life, come and ask him today. Come and lay down your good deeds. Come and lay down your accomplishment. Come and lay down every expectation you have that God will answer your prayers, keep you healthy, keep you rich, keep you happy, and say, God, I just want you. So if I need to lay down all of these good things, I want you to know they pedal in comparison.